the fabric here is going to bunch and the wrinkles are going to run in between those two tension points. See, there's a logic to everything. Hey guys, welcome to our tutorial for the month of October where we're going to be talking about how to paint clothing. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over some of the basics of clothing, some of the main concepts that you want to keep in mind. And then later on in the second half, I'm going to show you guys how to actually render these pieces, how to paint them. So it should be a good time. With that being said though, uh, let's get into the topic. This is a piece of clothing. And the first thing I want to introduce you guys to is something called a tension point. Okay. This basically means when there's an object applying a certain amount of force onto a piece of fabric, you're going to create all of these creases and folds. So my hand is underneath this shirt right now, and you can see gravity is pulling the shirt down, but my hand is lifting it back up. So there's tension between my hand and the ground. So these folds are running down towards the ground. Now, when I take two hands and I pull on this fabric, whichever direction that I pull in, the folds of the fabric are going to run in between these two tension points. But there are different situations for this, right? Sometimes gravity is just pulling the cloth down and it's folding onto itself. And that's where you get this kind of zigzag pattern that you see on the sleeve here. We'll get into that a little bit more as we uh, start to look at some of the examples that we're going to render. But now let's get onto the second concept and that is understanding shapes. So what you see on the screen here is an example of two different pieces of clothing, but I've only used two different colors for each one of them. And you can see that these two pieces bear a pretty good resemblance to an actual piece of fabric because of the shapes that I've used to indicate where the light and the shadows fall. One of the keys to being able to paint clothing well is to be able to capture these shapes that give you that sense of folding and creasing in the fabric. You guys can try this out yourself. I think it's a really good exercise. If you can take two colors and make a piece of clothing look like a piece of clothing, then you're doing something right with your shapes. So now that we've talked about shapes, there's one final concept that I want you guys to understand, and that is the importance of edges when it comes to clothing. One mistake that I think is really, really common that people make is uh, over blending some of the creasing and folding on clothing. While we're on the topic, I'll give you guys a quick demonstration of how you can use edges to your advantage, okay? So I'm gonna take that uh, shadow color and I'm just gonna apply it in a softer way around the creases. Using the smudge tool, I'm gonna to blend it back into the light. We're still working with the two basic colors, but changing the edges gives this fabric a new softer feel. But I want you guys to take note of how I blended out some of these soft edges while keeping some of the hard ones. So if I turn on the original and turn this one off, you can see that some of the hard edges are still in there. But now there's a combination of hard and soft edges that give this fabric a really realistic looking feel. So these are the main ideas that you want to keep in mind as we go through the rendering stage of this tutorial, okay? You gotta remember how the clothing folds occur, right? At tension points, because of gravity, because of the weight of the cloth, and you gotta understand how to capture the shapes accurately in a way that you could represent the clothing with very minimal rendering. On top of all that, you wanna also pay attention to the types of edges that are occurring at these shadow and light shapes. So with that out of the way, let's get on to the actual rendering part. This is gonna be very simple. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bright purple color that I think is representative of the bright area on the t-shirt and I'm just going to fill the entire shape with it and I'm gonna go back in and apply the shadow shapes. So now I'm picking a darker color and applying it to the shadow regions on the shirt. So taking note of the shadow shapes here, I'm using the original colors to cut back into the shadow color to create this nice triangular shape here. And you see how the folds here are radiating outwards from under the armpit. That's because the arm is down. So when that arm is down, it's pulling the fabric down and it's creating a point of tension where that fabric can crease and wrinkle. Because a t-shirt is designed to look something like that. So that's why with a lot of shirts, you see the wrinkles come out from the armpit because of that tension point. Now I'm gonna come down here and apply some of the shadow on, on this side and this major shadow right here. If it's too dark, that's okay. We can correct that later on, but we just wanna get this shape down first. So I think that looks pretty good for our shapes. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the pressure opacity on my round brush and I'm gonna get into a little bit more of the edges. Again, still using the same two colors, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just lightly glaze this shadow color 
towards this side of the shirt because I see more light value uh, towards the top and it's a little bit darker as we get to the bottom, but it's a very subtle transition. So I'm just gonna glaze it very lightly here. And then I can use the original light color and uh, kind of glaze back into this, creating that soft transition from the top to the bottom. So we've established the shapes first, now we're establishing the edges. And I can even take the smudge tool and kind of blend everything out. You wanna make sure not to overdo this uh, because if you blend everything, then nothing really stands out. There won't be any more hard edges and uh, you're gonna be lacking points of interest and focus in your clothing. So notice how I'm keeping that hard edge right there where I see a hard edge and I'm softening the edge where I see a softer transition. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the rest of the shadow shapes. Just a little bit more softness up here and we should be good. So I think that looks pretty good to me. Again, when you're observing these reference photos, always try to think to yourself, why are these folds occurring where they're occurring? For example, on the chest area here, we're getting these large folds because there is a point of tension where her chest is making contact with the fabric and then gravity is pulling the rest of the fabric down, but her stomach is not making contact with the fabric. So it's almost free hanging from that point of contact and these folds are radiating outwards from that point of tension. When you understand the why behind these things, you can start to apply it to your own drawings straight out of your imagination. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into a more refinement kind of stage. So far we've been using only two colors, but notice how on the reference photo there is a lighter area here which transitions into the darker area. So we're going to apply an even lighter light onto this shirt. This is going to give us a little bit more depth in terms of our rendering for this piece of clothing. I'm gonna just apply this gently, almost like a glaze over the surface. And I'm doing this from a reference because if you're practicing something, you gotta make sure to be observing from a reference and learning from how it looks in real life. Now I still feel like the clothing's a little bit dead, so this is where we can have a little bit more fun. What I usually like to do at this stage is I would take you know, the shadow color, for example. If you look in here, uh, this shadow color becomes a little bit more warm, a little bit more vibrant because of the bounce light on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shift the hue a little bit and I'm gonna shift the saturation up a little bit and uh, I can play around with the colors that I want to apply here and just glaze that into the shadow to make it look a little bit more lively than before. And this is not just random, I'm actually observing areas where I see a little bit more saturation. Now remember, this is uh, not like a definitive way of how to paint clothes. This is just how I like to do it. I find it to be the most efficient and uh, it's also quite simple. And you don't have to be limited to just one hue shift. You can you know, really, really mess around with it and uh, see what works for the piece that you're trying to do. You know, the reason we save it for this final stage is because uh, one of the reasons that a lot of people get overwhelmed with clothing is trying to capture all of these different hue shifts and value shifts too early on before you actually get the form down. What we're trying to do is we're breaking down the form, getting the shapes right, getting the edges right, and then we can play around and have a bit more fun with the colors. Remember, you're not trying to capture it one-to-one, -one. you just want to represent it well enough that when somebody looks at it, they could tell what it is. So now I'm just gonna go back in with a sharper brush and do some small refinements in the creases. Just sharpen things up a little bit. And I can add a little bit more highlights onto some of the small folds and wrinkles here. All right, so if you've been following along, this is our first piece of clothing render. Very, very simple. So getting into the final examples, uh, we're gonna get into fabric that's a little bit shinier and uh, it's gonna have a different texture from the ones that we did before. But again, we're gonna follow the same process. I'm gonna try to isolate the areas of light 
and the areas of shadow. Now, because this is a relatively tight fitting piece of clothing, we're gonna get much smaller folds and creases, and they're all gonna be a lot more closely tapered to the body. So you're gonna see these tiny creases that string across the leg from the back of the butt to the front of the thigh. You're gonna get a lot of pulling tension because of the two surfaces uh, acting in different directions. And on top of that, the leg is sticking out a little bit. So the fabric here is gonna bunch and the wrinkles are gonna run in between those two tension points. See, there's a logic to everything. But with this stage being done, I'm gonna get back in here and start to soften up some of these edges to make it look a little bit more believable. So we will use the smudge tool here to really soften some of these shadow transitions because this uh, leather is very closely tailored to the body. It is going to have a softer shadow transition because it's molding to the shape of the leg, which is actually like a very round cylindrical kind of shape. Okay, so after the first stage where we find the shapes and the second stage where we refine the edges, uh, now we can go back in and add some highlight colors. So I'm just going to apply it to areas where I see it following the form of the body. So adding this brighter highlight here, what it's doing for us is it's changing the way this material feels. Now it looks a little bit more shiny. And if you need to come back in here and soften any of these edges, uh, feel free to do so. That's it for our highlight stage. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna observe the different colors that are present in these pants. And I see a little bit of blue because of the ambient lighting from the sky. So I'm gonna apply that onto the back of the leg. It's again, like a gentle glaze on top, just like that. And you see that blue is really starting to come through, but I also see a bounce light, which is a little bit of a warmer yellowish color here. Again, once I've applied this, I'm gonna go back in and do a little bit more refinement just to make the folds and creases a little bit more apparent. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. And in this stage, you know, you could go back in and add some more refinement to the details. You know, for example, there's that little uh, crease line right there on the back, which runs down the back of the thigh. And this is uh, really dependent on your personal style, but you could really push the rendering of clothing as far as you want into you know the realms of photorealism. But for me personally, I like to stop at a certain point. So I think this piece is pretty solid now and I'm cool to move on to the next. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna do something a little bit more challenging. This is a silky kind of clothing material, but we're still gonna be following relatively the same steps, okay? Something like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the pressure opacity on my round brush and just kind of almost go straight into treating the edges. So I'm just gonna find the dark areas. So you can see how the round brush is giving me a very natural fade in some of these areas, and that's exactly what I'm looking for here. I wanna get that fade in there. It's a soft transition in the material. And we can get into a little bit more of the edges here now. We can come down here. You see a lot of the creasing happening because of that tension point pulling in the midsection of this dress. And once I'm finished with this stage, I can then get onto the fun part, which is applying some of the highlights. It's a very, very bright kind of highlight color, but I'm just going to apply it onto the area where I see a bright patch. So for example, up there on the shoulder, on the chest. Now, obviously this doesn't look 
like the reference photo yet. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the original light color and we're just gonna brush it back in to the light color that we've applied. Reapplying it, brushing it back in. And you can see that top section is really starting to take on quite a silky kind of look and feel. And I want to come down here and do the same thing. And now I think I want to go back in and apply some different colors. For example, a little bit of blue uh, in the bottom section. I'm assuming that's probably from the ambient lighting in the environment. A little bit of blue in the midsection too. Right there. I also see hints of yellow here. And I'm assuming that's from uh, bounce lighting in the environment. So just uh, apply that on there and you can see as soon as I put this in here it just makes the uh, entire piece look so much more lively. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I can come back in here and just really uh, sharpen up some of these details, make it look even more refined. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys learned something new. Guys, clothing doesn't have to be super complex. If you can break down the most basic concepts, if you can understand how these folds occur, why they work the way they do, and then you can apply the different shapes and edges onto your pieces and work from big picture down to small detail, it's uh, it's not that overwhelming at all. Hope this tutorial has been helpful for you guys. Go out there and uh, have fun studying some clothing. And once again, I wanna say thank you guys so much for all of your support here. Here. really appreciate you guys I can't do any of this without you guys so once again thank you from the bottom of my heart and I will see you guys on the next tutorial